In this lesson, I'll introduce you to generative AI model as a black box. You'll learn various common terms used in the context of Gen AI models, and we'll also try out a Gen AI application. This is the definition of generative artificial intelligence that I have picked up from Wikipedia. Generative artificial intelligence is artificial intelligence capable of generating text, images, or other media using generative models. Generative artificial intelligence is also known as generative AI or Gen AI. To explain this further, I'll treat Gen AI model as a black box. Gen AI is made available to users by way of models. These models are built by researchers, enterprises, and very rarely even by individuals. The creator of the model is referred to as the model provider. For example, GPT-4 is the name of the model that powers ChatGPT. This model was created by OpenAI. Here's another example. Lama family of model were created by Meta. Now, I just gave two examples, but there are many more models and the number of models is growing rapidly. For the time being, let's not worry about any of these specific models or providers. A model can take an input which can be in the form of text, video, images, and audio. The input in the context of generative AI model is referred to as a prompt. Model processes the request and generates a response in a format as requested in the prompt. The output from the model is referred to as a completion. Generative AI models allow users to change their behavior by way of tuning or control options exposed by the model. These controls are adjusted by the user to achieve the desired output from the generative AI model. Now, before going any further, let's take a look at a generative AI application in action. Microsoft search engine Bing is powered by generative AI models. When you initiate a search on the Bing site in a browser window, it invokes the model with the text that you provide in the search box. The output generated by the model is then shown as a response. Let's check it out. Bing search is presented in the form of a chatbot. You provide the input in this text box and Bing responds back with an output. So let's go ahead and generate some original content. I'm going to ask Bing to generate an original poem about my pet dog, Jolly. And here, Bing is generating the poem. Now, I'm not 100% sure if it is an original poem or not, but for sure, it looks good to me. In this example, I provided a text prompt to Bing. Bing sent that text prompt to a model in the backend, which most probably is GPT model. The GPT model processed the received prompt and responded back with a text for the poem. In this case, the response is a text, but we can also ask Bing to generate images. So let's ask Bing to generate an image of a dog walking on top of a cake. Now in this example, Bing has responded back with uh, some search results here. And then our interest is in the generated images. And these images are generated by a model in the backend. The name of the model is Dolly. So when I say these images are generated, it means that the model is generating these images from scratch. They are not picked up from any website. And if you look at these images, they are pretty good quality. So I suggest that you try out playing with Bing to check out its creative capabilities. The last thing I want to show you are the controls which are available for managing the behavior of the model. Let me just delete the current sessions. And this is the control that is available to you. The model's response is set to be balanced, but you can make it more creative or you can make it more precise. These are some high-level controls. But when you're working with models at programmatic level, you have very fine control on the behavior of the model. More on this in a later lesson. Let me introduce you to a new term, multimodal models. Multimodal models are trained on different types of training data to generate an output that is of different type compared to the input type. In case of DALI, it takes text and generate images. 
DALI is a multimodal implementation of OpenAI GPT-3 model. Now let's talk about training. Like other machine learning models, generative AI models also acquire knowledge by way of training. During training, a large volume of existing knowledge or data is consumed by the model algorithm. Training sets the values for parameters and weights in multiple layers of the deep learning networks that make up the generative AI model. Recall that the total number of parameters learned during the training is commonly used as a measure of the deep learning network's complexity and capability. And that is true even for the Gen AI models. Here is an example of a model. BirdBase is a generative model created by Google. This model has 110 million parameters. It was trained by Google research engineers with data from Wikipedia and Google Books. For more details on this model, check out the blog link that I have provided. So far in this lesson, I have referred to these four models. There is something common among these models. The first is that all of these models have been trained on large amounts of publicly available data. And the second aspect is that these models were not built for any specific task, but they're designed to be adapted. Such models are referred to as foundation models. Let me give you a more formal definition. Foundation model is a paradigm for AI systems in which a model trained on a large amount of unlabeled data can be adapted to many applications. I picked up this definition from Wikipedia. Now let's talk about large language models. A large language model is a type of foundation model that has been trained on textual data. The training data can be a mix of different languages and the objective for this model is to understand the language, such as the grammar of the language, use of words in different contexts, sentence structure, etc. Models with common architecture are said to belong to the same family. For example, TinyBird and DistillBird have the same architecture as BirdBase. The difference is in the number of parameters. TinyBird has 14.5 million parameters and DistillBird has 66 million parameters. Both are relatively smaller than the BirdBase model that has 110 million parameters. These models fall in the category of small language models which are models with less than 100 million parameters. These models are computationally very efficient and they are easy to deploy. As a result, they are a good candidate for use in edge devices like mobile phone, consumer devices such as TVs and even coffee makers. In this lesson, I provided you a very high level view of generative AI models. Generative AI models are built with multiple layers of deep learning networks. These models are pre-trained on public domain data. Foundation models are generative AI models that are not trained for a specific task, but these models can readily be adapted for tasks depending on the needs of the application. Large language models, also known as LLM, are foundation models that take text as input and generates text as output. Small language models have relatively smaller number of parameters compared to their LLM counterpart. Typically, a model is considered small if it has less than 100 million parameters. Happy learning and I'll see you in the next lesson.